Hello, everyone, and welcome to another roundtable. Today, I have Russell and Matt, and we're going to be talking about smart accounts, but no seed phrases, which I think is one of the coolest things that is in the Radix technology stack. So let's start with this idea of smart accounts and no seed phrases. How are accounts on Radix different from on other layer ones, Russell? And the, the smart account name gives it away a little bit. There's there's an actual smart contract there that has some logic behind it. So it's it's user configurable. You can do things like say, I don't wish to receive airdrops of unknown things ever. And that's a setting you can put right in on your account. And this is very different than other platforms where you have this very tight link between I have a key and because I have a key, I map this to an address and that is effectively my account. Okay. We are in the realm now of you have you are able to control an account with a key, but we also have this powerful recovery model we can tie into it where you move past where you have this single key controller. Okay, so can I think of it like a smart contract? Yeah, it definitely is. It's a very specialized one. I mean, it's, I always like thinking of this in terms of there are these, these two sides of the problem that, that have been solved before, but not together. Right. Where you've got the, you know, if you look at traditional applications, you know, you've got an account with your bank and things like this. Like people are used to this idea that I've got this set of information of things that I know and things I can produce and so forth. And that demonstrates to the bank that I am who I say I am and therefore I can use their system. What's broken about that isn't that system. No one's upset with like, oh, you know, using my bank is a huge difficult thing to do. Right, right. What they're upset about the fact is that their bank limits what they can do with their money and all these sorts of things that we're trying to fix with DeFi. Then you had Ethereum that went to the other extreme, which uh, said that, well, great, you're going to have full choice of any application you're going to, you want to interact with. Your funds are your own. You have full control. But the login mechanism went way, way back to sort of said, well, we're going to go with the most technically simple thing, which is there's a single uh, key pair. Right. And that key pair confers con full control of your representation on the ledger. Right. Like that, is, that is you, is your, is your address. So basically what smart accounts do is dissociate those things. We can now have, rather than having a bank, which is, can, can sort of vouch for you, a bank that understands, oh, okay, if they can produce these pieces of information, then they are who they say they are. Right. Now the smart account does that because we can actually, we've built in an on-ledger representation of, of accounts. We needed that anyway so it could hold assets because our platform understands assets, but now we can build logic around it. So now, you know, if you want to have a YubiKey and your phone used to sign for something, you can put that in the smart account. Or if you have, um, if you lose your phone and you need to be able to say, hey, peers, can you, can you initiate a recovery process for me because I lost my phone? We can set that up so that you can initiate that process, but you still have no ability to take my money because I don't trust you. Right, right. But it, does that mean that I need to understand what smart contracts are to be able to initiate a smart account on Radix? No, the cool thing is that the, this is a, it's an on-ledger mechanism, but there's a lot of things like this with the Radix wallet right. where we have the mechanism on the, on the network, but the wallet gives you a nice usable interface to those features. So you don't have to write your own smart contract code. The wallet understands that there is this smart account. It has certain features. And so the wallet can lead you through an onboarding process that feels very, very familiar to you. you right. um, in fact, what we found in user testing was that often people would think that they were basically signing onto a banking app. And we had to explain, no, 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 actually the result of this is you're gonna have full control of your own funds. You'll be able to move those funds between applications. So it feels sort of magical that you can have the best of both worlds. Okay, but we're saying that you're throwing, so it's completely decentralized, mm -hmm. no centralized parties, but we're saying we're throwing away the seed phrase. So like, how does that work? And, and this is one of those things that's, this is harder to explain than to use, right. but it, it, it's important that we explain it at least, uh, give, it a, give it a start here. So every account, you could think of it, they start in, there's two modes it can be in. Right. Every account starts in the mode of, there's just this single key that controls it. Right. It's still the smart account, but basically if you think of what has the power, it's this single key and there's no recoverability at this point. So what the wallet will encourage you to do is to say, hey, you should you know, convert this into a, a multi-factor recoverable mode. Right. And then it'll walk you through some steps to do that. And this whole system is based around, there are three roles in the, you can think of it as the account control system. The role you think of most often is the primary role. Okay. So the primary role is what lets you do things like withdraw tokens from the account, mm -hmm. right? This is the day-to-day the -day access role. Mm -hmm. And for this role and for all the roles I'm going to talk about, 
you can set the rules on what are the factors that make up this role. So I could say the primary might be um, my phone plus my YubiKey, I need both of those things. Or my hardware wallet can act on its own because I'm comfortable with the security there, it's got a pin. This is all completely configurable by you and the wallet will walk you through some, here's some suggested scenarios based on what hardware do you have, how much money do you have here, that sort of thing. Okay. So in addition to the primary, the other really important one is there's a recovery role. And you can think of this as this is the role that initiates, I wanna change what are the controls on the thing. And this role has no ability to take money out of your account or anything like that. This is exactly the thing that you say, hey, trusted friend peers, if my phone falls into a volcano, I would like you to help me initiate the recovery process. Okay. But that's a lot of power to give to someone. Whoa. So there's, there's also, <laughs> there's this confirm role, and this confirm role on its own doesn't do anything, but it basically acts as two out of a two of three on a roles of right. changes to do things. That's the basics of it. There's some, some nuance there. Right. But uh, the important thing is for all of these three different roles, you choose what factors make up each role. And it could just be a single factor if that's enough for you. Like, look, my one friend is my recovery source. I'm good with that. I don't need more. Right. That's your choice. Or you could federate that a bunch, a bunch of people and say any one of these seven or four of these five. And, and I, can I have as many roles on each of the different types as I like? Right, like e as many factors. As many like factors. I want this you be keep. Right, right. 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 And, and one, of, one of the things I really love about this is that, I mean, we're big fit. We're big believers in not your keys, not your crypto. Like we're not by saying we're getting rid of the seed phrase, we aren't getting rid of this notion that you need to control your own stuff. What we're right. trying to do is get rid of the ridiculously high bar for understanding seed phrase concepts and things like right. that, but without giving up any of the control. Right. So if you're someone that says, you know what, I am totally comfortable with a, a 24 word seed phrase, you can still do that with this model. You can still say, you can set up your account that way and say, right. nope, I want that seed phrase to control everything about that account. I want to basically have that populate all three roles. I, I, I accept that full control. You can do that. But most people don't want to do that. And so we, the, the wallet will sort of lead you through these common recognizable patterns of security setup that for most people are very, very good, but eliminates none of those roles require you to write down a seed phrase. Right. So you can set it up so that your primary role generally is your phone, because this is the thing that everyone has. And everyone's phone now has biometrics that protects a, a keychain, which right. allows you to have very nice control of a private key. Right. The reason why you don't see that used in most of crypto is because if you lose your phone, right. you're screwed. Right. So there has to be some sort of back in, backup mechanism. Right. And basically, this is kind of what Apple does with pass keys. They say, well, OK, you're going to have a private key, but if you lose it, we've got it on iCloud for you. Right. We don't want to go that way either. <laughs> So the recovery in these other two roles, the recovery and the, and the uh, confirmation roles, allow the smart account to kind of manage that for you. And so we can set it up for the, the, the average user so that your recovery role is someone you trust. Hey, peers, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nominate you as my recovery. If I ever lose my phone or I buy a new one, you can initiate that process, but you can't touch my money. Right. And the confirmation role, we can set that up so it's, you must answer three of four of these security questions where only you know the answers. Right. Through some kind of cryptographic magic, we figured out a way of translating these security questions into a private key that the smart account on the ledger can recognize. Right. So this becomes a valid confirmation role that we can use. Right. And, and these on the questions, it's important to note because someone will be like, that can't possibly be secure. Right. <laughs> we were actually shocked at how you can generate good entropy to get you know, a, a proper random key is what comes out of this from a set of questions. We were quite surprised at how good this can be. Right. right? So I'm, I'm sure some people will feel uncomfortable with this and that's fine, you're not forced into it. Right. For the person who's accustomed to, oh, um, okay, I have my phone and I have some recovery based on information I know, and then I have a friend or a service that does recovery, I don't own a YubiKey or anything. That's fine, we've got a plan for you. Mm -hmm. right. And that's, that will probably be the majority case as we get to mainstream adoption. Right. It's a cool thing, because I mean, the YubiKey is another good example of this, how that there are these factors like that, which they have enough entropy that they're not brute forcible. These are safe keys to use, but you don't see them used in crypto because on their own, they, they don't have good properties for a single key. Like right. I would never want to use a YubiKey as my only key that unlocks my phone, my, my funds. <laughs> right. Because it's easily lost, it's yeah. easily broken, and yeah. all these sorts of things. Yeah. But as as a secondary key that I can cycle out with the other keys, yeah. it's great. Right. And there are lots of great sources for these things and we can make use of these things through smart accounts. So, so let me try and just summarize this a little bit in, in, in how I think I'm hearing it. So 
what we have is this on ledger component that we're calling a smart account. Yes. And you can think of it as a little bit like a smart contract, but it's kind of baked deep into the Radix functionality because you can't mm -hmm. actually generate anywhere that you can send money apart from these smart accounts or components of smart contracts. Now that smart account, you can, if, if I want to create what I would, as in, in Ethereum land or, or, or layer one land, think of as, as a, as a, as a uh, place that someone can send my money, I generate a public private key pair. And I do that on my phone, or I do that using my ledger device, or I do that using a 24 seed phrase, or whatever I want to do, I have to create a public private key pair. Now, phones can do that themselves. They're often non extractable, mm -hmm. which is why you don't use them, but the phone is creating a private key. And then it presents the public key and the, the, the account to the account, and that account is then going, okay, I will recognize signatures from this public key to allow me to do something with the account, say, for example, send transactions. But the important thing is, is that it's separating out this idea of an account address from a public-private key pair. And right. as soon as I've separated out those two concepts, I can now have many public-private key pairs associated with an account, right. and I can set different rules around them. So I can say, OK, well, the, these ones allow me to spend. And they have some spending rules associated with them because it's a smart contract. Right. I can be quite specific about those spending rules. And these ones, these allow recovery, but they don't allow any control of the account apart from recovery, just adding another primary factor. Right. And then you have these confirm, this extra idea, which I'm assuming came out because you were like, well, if you only have recovery, yes, it doesn't have control. But if you have the ability to add a primary factor, then of course, then de facto, you, you de have facto control. have control. So you were like, okay, well, we can actually add this third thing called confirmation, which means that you can go, oh, my friend has got the ability to do recovery. My wife has got the ability to do recovery. But you can still have this extra thing, which could just be something you remember. Something mm -hmm. you remember, a set of things you remember, but still in a completely decentralized way. Meaning you can call up your friend and say, hey, I've lost my phone. I need you to initiate recovery, right. but that recovery won't continue until the thing that's in my head is also confirmed. And this is all done in a decentralized way using these smart accounts. Is that a, yep. a good summary? And all totally native. You can't circumvent any of this. There's no, oh, I attacked the wallet app successfully and I got around this. It's literally what's on the account on the ledger. You right. can't subvert it. That's really cool. So like, obviously the ability to live without seed phrases and have customer controls is 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 a is a really big deal, but is there anything else that comes out of the account model that's cool? I mean, the there are a few user configurable things. I, I I mentioned earlier, you can select: Do I wish to receive random tokens I've never seen before? Right. Do I want to just have an allow list of I only accept these tokens, or a deny list of ones? So you I can I can I can specify that I can't get like random yes crap if you want or whatever. To, right? yeah. That's amazing. If you want to, and the wallet will, and this by default you receive anything. Right. But it's basically a tap in the wallet to say, hey, no more airdrops for me. If I mean, hey, you could be missing out on some profit, right? right. We don't want to default to that. Right. So, and, and I mean, it's foundational right now. We have a bunch of ideas. One of the things that becomes really, really easy is something like a subscription model. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we imagine a future where there are more services that say, I will bill you in tokens on Radix. Right. Setting up things like once per month, someone presenting this proof of authority is allowed to withdraw up to $100 USD from my account, right? That's totally trivial to set up with a smart account. We haven't built that logic in yet because there is no such service that demands that. But when those things start appearing, it will be really easy to add things like a, a subscription model, which is the sort of thing you expect from your account in the real world right. where you have this recurring billing. Right, right. right. so you, you can literally do direct debits. Right, right. This, this ability of being able to build logic into the account allows you to do these things. It's, these are just updates to the smart contract. But the, the most difficult part of the problem is having a programmable account in the first place, which you cannot do on other networks because you don't have something that holds assets that you can then wrap that logic around. If you have a ledger where all your account is just a, an address that comes from a key pair, if you wanted to implement that sort of direct debit logic, you'd have to implement in all the different individual token smart contracts that you interact with and go, oh, well, when you're using this, this key, right. please do this and please do right. this. Whereas right. we can put it on this one component that's used by everyone for holding their assets. 
it's it's such a more flexible model that allows us to do things like this. So it basically just makes more of that account fit into everyday people's lives rather than having to remember, oh, I've got to make all of these payments today or whatever. It's just, it's right. just baked in. And it allows us to build things on top of it. Remember, this is the on-ledger functionality. So, so much of what the wallet does is making use of these features. But you could also imagine, you know, back-end sort of systems where today you would have had to set up some sort of complex custodial relationship sort of thing that's holding keys on an HSM or something like that. And ultimately, all of that distills down to one private key, which is then used to control the account right. on Ledger. This right. is what actually happens on Ethereum and so right. forth. Um, we had to do this when we had right, our, we our yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethereum token. We spent yeah, yeah, yeah. a heck of a lot of time right. setting up a custodial system to do right. just this. Right. Uh, and a lot of money. Whereas now, you can have a smart account that basically the, the, the simple form of this that the wallet would lead you through, if you're building your own software, you can set up very, very flexible sets of rules to so right. that three out of four directors can sign for this, or there's an override key that's provided by the system, and if all that fails, we've got a custodian and some other just jurisdiction that can unlock this. You can just, that's just configuration on the smart account rather than being a whole new system that you have to build. That's amazing, so full, full multi-sig capabilities with right. hierarchy and all this kind of stuff. Right, it's all mm -hmm. possible, yeah. So what impact is this all gonna have? I mean, you won't wake up at three in the morning wondering if your money's safe, right? <laughs> That's the biggest thing, is trying to get to the point of, I still do that, certainly. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Panic wake-ups at midnight are my favorite things about DeFi. You should, you should feel like, just like your money at the bank, you go, it, it's gonna be there when I wake up in the morning. Right. And it's not that I, uh, if I'm careless, I lose access to it forever, right? right? It's, it's removing that fear of, did I do a good enough job of securing my key? And right. Now that's taken care of for you because if you didn't do a good enough job, it's okay. You're covered. You know, we have other other routes for you to get control again. Yeah, I mean, I really see this as an aspect of user experience where you, no matter what you're doing in terms of delivering features, like we've got a wallet or a network or anything, they can do more things. You can't go backward on ease of use. You can't go backward on the expectations people have for this. So the the, to me, the real end result of this is we have now the ability of building a wallet and other systems that can, people don't have to develop new expectations for how to manage security. They right. can just come in, use the system, and you can build a, a wallet that just asks them a few questions, does a few things, and the result is a nice secure system where you didn't have to educate them about anything new. Right. They didn't have to say like, all right, there's a, there's a new way of thinking about this thing and you're responsible for all these things you weren't responsible for, for before. If that's, the, if that's the barrier to entry, you'll never surpass it. That's so cool. Well, it's so interesting to learn a bit more about smart accounts and uh, no seed phrases as a possible end route for users. So, Russell, yes. And there's one more thing. Go on. There's one more thing. Personas, yes. which we talked about in the keynote, use the same system. Because okay. personas, they're basically just, it's the, the there's an on-ledger representation of the persona, and we'll talk about this in another talk, but the important thing for now is, all of those multi-factor features that we wrapped around the smart account, we can also wrap around this representation of identity. Okay. So if you lose your if you if you lose your phone or something like that, you can recover your login to all the websites that you logged into. It uses exactly the same on ledger system with components, and we'll talk more in another talk about how we use personas. But nice little, little sneak peek. Yeah, little tease thing, yeah. for the next one. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you very much, Russell. Thank and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>